right, we're going to look a little bit more, <clears throat> excuse me, at some advanced uh, texturing options. Particularly, we're going to look in the Arnold uh, rendering system and look at how we can create some uh, transparent textures um, with a little bit more ease and a little higher quality. So I have a basic scene here with a cylinder and then this kind of cube that I've flattened down a little bit. I have a sky dome light in the background just so we have some default light in the scene since it's the Arnold render, you got to have some light. And um, just as a quick little reminder, some people, you know, when you're a beginner, you don't realize that you can actually apply different textures uh, to different polygon selections on a single object. So right now this cylinder is all blue, but if I go to face, uh, I could choose some different surfaces. So I could like alternate. I'm holding down shift and I'm just kind of going around. You know, I can kind of go all the way around if I want, uh, but that'll do. Um, whoop. I unselected one there. And uh, I'll get one more over on this side. There we go. And I've, I've made those selections. Now I can right click and say add a new material. And I'll give this a blend. You can see they've already changed colors. And I'll make these like a you know, bright magenta. I click off of it and now I have a multi-textured single object but with two different uh, surfaces on it. So it actually has a AI standard surface on one and a blend on the other, uh, which is kind of fun, right? So you can see how powerful that can be for placing textures in specific locations off of polygon selections, you know, cutting maybe some new polygons if you need to with your edge loop tools or however way you want to do it. Uh, in this case, it'll just give us a little bit more of a dynamic uh, view of our transparent object. So for this object, for this kind of like pane of glass that I've created, uh, I'm, I gave it this an AI standard surface. And of course, we uh, came down to transmission and we increased the weight of that, right? So if I bring that back to zero, it's completely opaque. But we brought that up to about, I think I was at like 0.75 roughly. Uh, and the other thing, don't forget to do on the poly cube, on the original, uh, or I'm sorry, on the original P cube shape that I created, we had to unfold the Arnold tab and just turn off the opaque. It'll still show up actually, uh, but it just gives you a better quality uh, when opaque is toggled off. So now that I have all of that, I've got the AI standard surface. I've been playing with the transmission. Um, let's just give it a quick preview. I'm going to go to my Arnold tab here and click on the Arnold render view. Go ahead and hit play the play button on that. And we can see that we can now see very nicely. We can see this multicolored cylinder through the glass. Uh, looks very good. If I zoom in on it, we can see some nice light refraction going on. Now, don't forget the IOR rating. Um, the IOR rating, this is a, it's called an index of refraction. And I just want to show you this really cool um, reference out here. This is from pixelandpoly.com. This gives you ratings for all sorts of different materials out there for their IOR ratings. So if you're trying to recreate something, it's pretty awesome. You can really like pick out a specific IOR rating to try to create something very photorealistically, right? So glass is 1.5, hence why I have this set at roughly 1.5. Now if I up that, say I go to a 7 on that, now you can barely see it, right? Because it's refracting light differently than how glass would. I can still see it a bit, but it's a lot more opaque. If I back that off to say 5, oh, 25 was way too much. Now it's completely opaque. Let's bring that down to like 5, then it comes back. So you can really look at those references out there, look at how different people have actually measured the IOR rating, that index of refraction. And it's really important with transparent uh, materials. So again, if I want to go back to the glass, there we go. I can always change this tint to green or yellow or red or whatever color I want to give it. Um, and, and very quickly, you start to have a much more photorealistic, uh, semi-transparent uh, material uh, working in that in that kind of realm, right? So um, I'm going to go ahead and just do another polygon selection. Let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and um, actually I want to choose faces here. I'm just going to choose a couple of these blue ones and I'm going to assign the existing material of that AI standard surface one. Ooh, it did not like that. Let me see if I can do it up here. Right click on that. Um, I was just trying to see if I could make some semi-transparent areas on this object. Um, got a face here. Let's just go ahead and do a little selection of the top. I'm going to go ahead and make a new material. AI standard surface. So Arnold. 
standard surface. There we go. And let's bring that transmission way up. And let's just tweak that color a little bit. Maybe like a green. And make sure that the IOR is at 1.52 on default. But then if we want this to really show up, I believe, let me stop the render on that and go back to object mode. Go to this pizza cylinder shape and Arnold and turn off opaque. Now let's take a look now. Yeah. You can see, you can start to see through it a bit at the top. <clears throat> now I could increase on that standard surface. I could go to transmission really increase the transmission. Oh, that was the wrong AI standard surface. Sorry about that. That was the second one I should have done it to. Excuse my dogs. And we can increase that. So just playing around a little bit more and uh, have fun with these semi-transparent materials.